Marvel Comics were saving up all their comic book news for the past few months. We finally got it all delivered this weekend. We got some really big news. Jason Aaron is off the Avengers. is a new mystery Jonathan Hickman project. We got new creators coming for the Fantastic Four. And also Marvel Comics are giving us more details about that impending Spider-Man Venom crossover event series. I guess it's going to come out at the end of this year or sometime like that. First up, let's talk about Avengers. They're finally free. Jason Aaron's run has been absolutely terrible. Earth's Mightiest Heroes are assembling for a new Avengers Assemble Alpha One-Shot, which ends Jason Aaron's era on Marvel's Avengers. Aaron's Avengers series began in 2018. While the heroes have had to face a number of different foes and challenges throughout the run, the current storyline sees Earth's Mightiest Heroes going up against Mephisto. Recent issues have placed the Avengers going back in time, where they've encountered a handful of different variants, including a World War II version of Doctor Strange, a Ronin version of Ghost Rider, and more. Jason Aaron's Avengers series actually started out really good. Like, the first issue was Hot Fire. The first story arc, for the most part, was just really solid. Then we got that War of the Realms event that he was doing with Thor. He tied the Avengers into it. It killed all the momentum. I came back and I read the Blade story where Blade became an Avenger and they were fighting vampires, and that was okay. And then he just started, I don't know, just kind of throwing crap at the wall and nothing stuck. We got, a like, the Phoenix Force tournament. We got World War She-Hulk. We had something to do with the, the Age of Conchu. And now they're just going back and finding variant characters of the Avengers throughout the multiverse. This is not a new idea. It's basically Jason Aaron just using a trope, hoping that these characters being new, these new versions of characters will be like, I don't know, speculation worthy and people maybe will come and buy this cobble book because no one's going to buy it to read the content for the most part. The Avengers should be like surefire top 25 selling comic book. It's been out of the top 50 for a really long time. It's in terrible shape. I think his run has gone on probably two years too long. The writing's been on the wall that Jason Aaron and the Avengers just don't mix. He's not really good with team books. I don't think he's very good with superheroes, like with powers. I think he's much better with like grounded street level heroes, like a Punisher, like a Conan. Characters like that, once he starts working with the super powered characters right now, he just doesn't have a good feel for it. I know a lot of people like his Thor run, but his Avengers run just absolutely sucked. These are the details on this one shot we got coming up to end the Jason Aaron era on Avengers. Uniting the Avengers, Avengers Forever, and Avengers of 1 million BC in an epic saga that forms the capstone to Jason Aaron's era on Avengers from throughout time and the far corners of the multiverse. The mightiest heroes of all the Earths are assembling as never before for a battle beyond all imagining, a war that will take us from the prehistoric beginnings of an Earth under assault by the greatest villains who've ever lived to the watchtower that stands at the dark heart of the all and the always, where an army of unprecedented evil now rises. The biggest Avengers saga in Marvel history begins now. I get that Jason Aaron, I guess, is a long-term planner and really wanted these things to be impactful. He debuted the prehistoric Avengers essentially five years ago in Marvel Legacy number one. It was supposed to be a big plot point, but he never really did anything with it. You know, they visited some of the heroes, and sure, it's interesting seeing Ghost Rider on a woolly mammoth, but other than that, I just don't care. And then he started using this storyline to change the origin of Thor and do some other stuff, so... I don't think anyone really thinks that the prehistoric Avengers, 1 million BC Avengers are important. Avengers Forever is a really great idea, done much better several years ago. And it's just another example of him trying to duplicate someone else's homework and just not doing it very well. And by the time Avengers Forever came out, everyone was like, get Jason Aaron off of the Avengers. Uh, So, hey, have fun trying to do this three-way dance with the Avengers, the prehistoric Avengers and the Avengers forever and getting them together and making it feel important. But as long as Jason Aaron's name is at the top and it says Avengers on the cover, I just don't think anyone cares. As far as who could replace Jason Aaron on Avengers, the only name that really makes sense, in my opinion, is Donny Cates. Now, does he have enough time? You know, he's doing Thor, he's doing Hulk. Those are two characters that are normally on the Avengers. He's done a lot of really big team-up books. He's done a lot of big events, and they've pretty much all been successful and done at a pretty high level. I'm not really on the Donny Cage train at this moment in time. It feels like this is probably his nadir as far as creativity at Marvel Comics, but he's the name that makes sense as far as being a big name, and if you wanted to get some name cachet on the Avengers and really bump up sales with the creator. Another name to me that makes sense is Al Ewing. If you brought in Al Ewing, you know where the Avengers are going. They're going off to the cosmos. They're not going to stay on Earth. 
because that's kind of more his forte as far as his comic book storytelling. But he has done team-up books in the past, and he's done them pretty darn well. But if C.B. Cebulski called me and said, Wes, who should we put on the new Avengers title to replace Jason Aaron? I would say put Peter David on it. He's the best damn writer you have right now. He's already doing an Avengers book with the new Avengers, you know, back in the 80s, 90s timeline. I realize he's kind of stuck in these old continuity five-issue miniseries. You know, he did Symbiote Spider-Man. Now he's doing Maestro, Joe Fix-It. But he's the best writer they got. He's doing the best stories. And Peter David is a known commodity. And he's really, really solid right now. Does he have the energy to do one of the flagship titles for Marvel Comics and do it monthly? I'm not really sure, but that's who I would choose. Now let's talk about the Fantastic Four. Dan Slott's Fantastic Four is not terrible. It's not anything like his Iron Man. It's it's not anything like the last few years of his time on Spider-Man. But it wasn't great either. They brought the Fantastic Four back. People were excited. Then they saw Dan Slott's name. They're like, God, why Dan Slott? Thankfully, he's off the damn book now. And Marvel teased the start of a new era for the Fantastic Four by releasing an image of a compass with the Fantastic Four's logo in the center, the word writer at the top and artist at the bottom, while November 2022 sits below. Marvel Comics editor-in-chief C.B. Cebulski said David Pepos will be taking over the Fantastic Four series for two issues before the title relaunches later this year. Marvel has not yet announced a creative team behind the new series, but promised more announcements to come at a later date. What's interesting of note with this Fantastic Four teaser that they've shown is that you do have the compass, and at the top it does say writer right above N for north, and it says artist at the bottom right below S for south. There is speculation out there that that could mean Ryan North is the writer and Matthew Southworth is the artist, and I can't explain to you how bad of an idea that would be. Ryan North is one of the most incompetent writers in all of comic books, like he's VDIL levels of terrible comic book writer. He's not funny. He doesn't know superheroes and he's kind of a dork. Not that being a dork is bad. We're all kind of dorks, but he's a dork in a very bad way. As far as Matthew Southworth being the artist, he certainly worked at Marvel Comics in the past doing projects here and there, but he's never done a high profile project. He does have some art chops, but I don't think his art fits superheroes in the slightest. If it ends up being Ryan North and Matthew Southworth on this Fantastic Four series, it will bomb like you couldn't imagine. The Fantastic Four are the most important characters in Marvel Comics history. They pretty much started Marvel Comics as we know it. Really, Fantastic Four, number one, is the beginning of what we now know as Marvel Comics. So many things were introduced in those early days of Fantastic Four, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby on them that are still being mined today and are still the big villains and key plot points within the Fantastic Four. Such a great team. Marvel Comics need to do something, anything, to make Fantastic Four seem important. They really kind of threw them to the wayside there for a while when the movie rights were owed by Fox and Disney didn't have them, but they have them in-house now. It's time to get a good writer on there that really understands the team dynamics of the Fantastic Four. Jonathan Hickman comes to mind, but it sounds like he's doing something else. The creator that I think that would be really good on this that hasn't worked with Marvel for quite some time is Jeff Lemire. Jeff Lemire would be a great choice as the new Fantastic Four writer. Does he have the name cachet of a Jonathan Hickman? Absolutely not. Or of a Donnie Cates? No, no, he doesn't. But he gets team books and he gets teams like the Fantastic Four. He did something very similar with the Terrifics over DC Comics and it was fabulous. I would say he would be a great choice. Another good choice, in my opinion, would be Jed McKay. He's been hit or miss. I'll give you that. Taskmaster suck, but Moon Knight's great. Strange isn't very good, but I do think he might be able to do some good on Fantastic Four. Jed McKay could be an up-and-coming writer. Obviously, time will tell, but he would be another interesting choice. The writer, I think, I honestly believe will be taking over the Fantastic Four as the writer will likely be Jason Aaron. Marvel Comics and C.B. Cebulski appear to hold Jason Aaron in very, very high regard. He got an eight-year run on Thor, he got a four or five year run on, on Avengers. It wouldn't surprise me to see him do kind of a lateral move over to the Fantastic Four because they think maybe he has name value. I don't think Jason Aaron on a Fantastic Four book sounds very interesting. In fact, it sounds really terrible. But never put it past Marvel Comics to make a terrible decision. They could have put Chip freaking Zdarsky on the book following Marvel 2 in 1, and they chose to go with Dan Slott when that was obviously the wrong choice. And I don't think Chip Zdarsky is really available anymore. Feels like he's kind of tied up with the Batman right now and doing Daredevil stuff. So 
We shall see what happens. I don't think Hickman is in the cards. Obviously, he's already had a very successful, fantastic four run, but they also tease something that he's doing. Marvel Comics released a teaser for a new mystery project from writer Jonathan Hickman and artist Valerio Shidi with the text, what happens when the powers that be meet the natural order of things? The project is scheduled to launch in 2023 with more details to come at a later date. Hickman said, I've been working on this for three years. That message will not sound like gibberish when the first issues come out. He also mentioned the new still unnamed project is like the Sandman of the Marvel Universe. I think one of the worst moves a comic creator can do to promote their project is to compare it to another project that people already like. Why don't you sell it on the merits of what you're actually doing? Valerio Shidi, as the artist, kind of gives us an idea of what's going to happen. For the most part, Valerio Shidi has worked on a lot of stuff to do with cosmic stuff in the Marvel Comics universe. He's done a lot of Fantastic Four work. He's done some X-Men stuff. So it wouldn't surprise me if this has something to do with the cosmic portion of the Marvel Comics universe. If I had to take a guess in a gander, what could be the Sandman of the Marvel Comics universe in the hands of Jonathan Hickman, who is a fantastic writer when motivated with the right project, there's a good chance this could be like Eternals or something like that. Perhaps Marvel Comics still thinks the Eternals are important. Maybe there's a sequel movie coming out. I don't think so. It didn't appear to do very well. But given the talent involved, it kind of feels like an Eternals-like project. It's not going to be original stuff, right? Because Marvel doesn't really do creator-owned original works. DC does that a little bit, but Marvel doesn't really do it at all. Jonathan Hickman, on his best day, might still be the best comic book writer in the industry today. But we haven't really seen him on his best lately. Feels like he's been focusing on his Substack work. We haven't even got the end of the Black Monday murders or any of that stuff. And he's been persona non grata since leaving the X-Men quite some time ago. They chased him off. He was the man that reinvigorated X-Men and Marvel Comics absolutely dropped the ball hardcore. So I imagine Hickman wants to move on to something where he has a little bit more control and he doesn't have a bunch of imbeciles come in and kind of take over the project. Finally, Spider-Man, Venom, Black Cat, and an assortment of X-Men characters and more are assembling together for a new Marvel Comics crossover series, Dark Web. Marvel initially teased a Spider-Man, Venom, Dark Web development in April when releasing a teaser poster reading, A Dark Web is being spun. The upcoming Amazing Spider-Man number 14 serves as the Dark Web prelude. Releasing in November, the synopsis for the issue reads, We haven't seen Chasm since ASM 894 and the free comic book day issue, but that doesn't mean he hasn't been busy. Join us for this very special issue featuring Spidey's most dangerous new villain, as well as the Goblin Queen and a brand new villain. Spider-Man has one of the best rogues galleries in all of comic books, second only to Batman. Adding another villain doesn't seem necessary, but if it's a good villain, I'm all for it. I think Chasm has some potential, I guess. The design itself is good. It's striking. It feels like a Spider-Man villain. And they did a good job with the design. I just feel bad for Ben Riley. He deserves better. That character has been kicked around and stepped on. And I don't know. He's like the redheaded stepchild of Marvel comics at this point. You know, you wish better for the character. As far as Dark Web, I think it's a really stupid name for an event. And I have a feeling they got the idea from Ben Percy. He wrote like multiple storylines and multiple different comics at DC and Marvel called Dark Web. Like there are people that are just obsessed with the dark web obviously in spider-man it means something different you know he's a spider there's webs and stuff like that so it's a little bit more literal and figurative i don't know man are you excited for this i don't know we'll have to see what happens i don't care to see black cat tied into anything i don't think that character is doing very well right now spider-man and venom peanut butter and jelly you know what i mean the characters just go together if you need a reminder why jason aaron leaving avengers is a good thing I actually talked about Avengers 750 and what a crap show that thing was. Definitely check this out. A little reminder, a little taste, if you haven't seen it for yourself, on why Jason Aaron's Avengers is truly despicable and should have been canceled a long time ago.